Welcome back, friends. We're going to take a brief interlude this week and teach you how to use Brownie to ape safe. There's been a few high profile hacks within DeFi recently, and as a result, there's been a ton of interest in building out a tutorial for how you can use Brownie to interact more safely with smart contracts. We're going to use Curve here as an example. Ordinarily, I would just go through Curve's gorgeous front end. I'm dealing with the TriCrypto2 pool here, and I'm looking to deposit one Ethereum into the pool. So if all is going well, you just click deposit, it's gonna pop up your MetaMask, you'll confirm, and you'll be done. However, the recent Badger hack, the UI was actually compromised. So people were just going through the front end expecting everything was fine, but there was a malicious insert, and as a result, they were interacting with the wrong smart contract. If you'd gone through Brownie to do this, you might've been able to catch it. Here's how you would go about it. First, we click deposit and we're going to see it's popping up. In my case, I'm using uh, the crypto wallets within Brave, uh, but it's very similar to MetaMask. And this is asking me to confirm my deposit. I'd like to deposit one Ethereum. I'd like to wire this contract address. So first things first, you should always try and verify the contract address. Check the documentation, or if you know anything about it, just make sure it's a legitimate contract. Over here, I've gone ahead and fired up a mainnet fork within Brownie. We've talked about this several times. If you use a mainnet fork, you're able to simulate transactions, see how the blockchain would in fact react. So let's go ahead and load this pool it wants us to interact with as a contract. And now that we have this pool, we can interact with it in various ways. So we'd like to just go ahead and copy the exact call that's being made through MetaMask, or in this case, Brave Wallet. Within here you can see the data tab and this is giving the raw hex data and this is pretty tough for a human to debug but this is the actual data that's being sent to the smart contract and if we'd like to replicate this we want to try and put it in human language first fortunately any brownie contract container object has uh, what's called decode input and this allows you to pass the raw hex data and convert it into human readable form so we see that in this case is actually a fairly simple call. We're adding liquidity. And now we can simply replicate this. So even if I don't feel comfortable doing this in the UI, I could reject the transaction and run this exact call in Brownie, and this would be the exact same. I'll also need to run it from the account. For security purposes, I've just gone ahead and preloaded this using the Brownie config. Uh, Brownie config, you can set it to unlock accounts on the mainnet fork. And I've, uh, we'll stir this into accounts negative one. For your case, you'll probably enter the private key and run accounts.load when you want to access it. One more thing I'd like to do is I'd like to run a quick test, which is I'd like to make sure that the LP tokens is increasing. That's the effect I'd hope to get from this call. I add liquidity and I see my Ethereum balance drain, but I gain the corresponding amount in LP tokens. For now, I'm calling the pool.token to see what it thinks the LP token is. And we'll just start by confirming the balance of the whale is in fact nothing. Now let's simulate the transaction and see what the balance would be if I did run this. Copy the call directly. And then we'll need to pass the extra Brownie parameters. It always needs to know who the call is coming from. And in this case, you'll notice that this is dealing with raw Ethereum. It's sending one full Ethereum. Most Brownie contracts, this will be zero. Uh, sorry, most curve contracts will be zero because it's dealing with ERC-20 tokens. But in this case, it's dealing with raw Ethereum. So you need to wire that along with the balance. With Brownie, you just pass the value and you will pass the amount. I could copy this number. Uh, another great shortcut within Brownie is the way function. Way will accept human readable values of Ethereum and convert it into raw way. Now I'll go ahead and send this transaction. It will simulate it and it's confirmed. So now if all goes well, I should expect my LP balance has gone up. And sure enough, I do see that I've now received LP tokens in the pool. Uh, one last check you might do is just to confirm that this is in fact an LP token that belongs to Curve as opposed to a malicious contract. 
One way you can do this is use the curve registry. I have previously saved this as an alias. So check out the alias video if you'd like to pull that up. And registry has a function called get pool from LP token. This will return zero if it's not a real pool. But this is in fact returning an actual, actual contract call. If you want to be absolutely rigorous about this, you could take everything I did here and replicate it as a test and run it if the test looks good. This is a fairly simple transaction. So what I could do now is now that I feel fairly secure that this is returning exactly as I'd expect, I could just copy this contract call here. This is the exact sequence that will replicate it. I could exit out of here, fire up a new Brownie console, but do this in mainnet and run this transaction. This will help you safe friends. Always be careful. Nothing can prevent risk entirely within this space, uh, very dangerous space, but being able to run it within Brownie is going to give you a lot of extra comfort and security.